At 29 years old, the trajectory of my life changed completely when I went from being a car salesman, yes, that's right, a car salesman, to a software developer without having to graduate from school. I did it mostly on my own. So the question is, how did I do it? Well, I'll tell you that story here upcoming, but really what I wanna focus on is not necessarily my story of how I did it. I've detailed that in a different video, which I'll put right here. Mostly what I wanna talk about are some of the biggest takeaways. Cause right now I'm a mentor to aspiring software developers. And there are some big learning lessons from my own journey that I apply pretty successfully to a lot of my clients. And I'll share with you in this video. All right, so the first part we need to talk about is why. Why did I begin? And it's sort of like, what's the story there? Because many of you maybe are at that stage and wondering if this is the right decision. So for me, it was actually pretty simple. I was out for beer with a friend. Uh, one of my friends is a software developer. I was kind of complaining about the current job that I was in as selling cars. I was not very good at it. It wasn't for me. It wasn't really a good fit with my personality. And he actually mentioned to me that software development would might be a good fit for me. Like, now at the time, I kind of brushed it off because well, I thought you had to be very smart for that. I thought you had to go to school as something you had to have a lot of training for, but he'd explained to me how he had done it, which is he had taught himself, he had built a bunch of projects and got hired. And he said I would be a good fit. So I, you know, I was kind of on the fence about it, but I thought it was very interesting. And I asked, you know, if I can get a little bit of guidance. He gave me four bullet points. Like literally this email here is what he had sent me the night afterwards and said, if you follow that, you'll get pretty far. And so I followed it. I figured that the worst that would happen is I would commit a month to studying, to learning as much as I could. And I would learn that it wasn't for me or I wasn't good enough. And that's all I thought of it. So the big takeaway here for this first part is that you're probably asking yourself like, am I good enough for this? Am I smart enough? Is this something I'll even like? Instead of spending months thinking about it or researching or you know going to Reddit and seeing like, is this for me? My recommendation and what I did really well is I just dove in. So I figured I would give myself a month of learning, specifically learning. 100% focused on that. If I enjoyed the learning process, if I felt like it was something I could enjoy in a career setting, at the very least, I would get that knowledge. Because if I hated it, then I wouldn't have to go waste a bunch of time and spend a lot of time in limbo thinking about it. So get right to it, get to the learning process specifically so that you can figure out whether it's something for you or not. So as I had mentioned before, my friend had recommended four specific steps. And the first one was really to dive into this book called the Head First JavaScript Book. And now if you've watched my channel before, I recommend this more than I probably recommend anything else. And the reason is, is because it was awesome. I just dove into that book. It's a, it's a textbook, but it's not your typical dry, boring textbook that tells you this is what this is, that's what this is. It walks you through, it's a little goofy, it's got some exercises, even has like crossword puzzles in it. And it really focuses on just immersion and also doing activities and actually participating, not just reading and taking notes, but all of that. So all of it's encompassing. Okay, so it took me about a month, give or take, to finish that book. And the big takeaway I have from my experience of when I just started out, right? So when I just started diving into the learning process is keep it simple. I mean, I cannot stress enough how helpful this was for me. I have, I naturally have ADD. So my thoughts are boom, 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 going in a million different places all at once. The worst thing that I could have done when I started out is pick 10 different like, courses or books and try to think like more is better. All I had to do was finish this one book, try to get through it to the end, and every day I would wake up knowing like exactly what I had to do, which is like just get through as much of that book as possible. And it was really helpful because I learned a ton. I learned really what I would call the basics of programming, which is all of the key ideas, variables, functions, data types, quality comparison, even a little bit of how to debug, among some other things, which really carried over into this next phase that we'll talk about. Now, if you've watched this video up until this point and you've enjoyed it, I would recommend going down and hitting the subscribe button because there have been studies done that hitting that subscribe button on my channel specifically, it gives you a thousand percent increased chance that you'll become a self-taught software developer. This is science we're talking about here, and this is an actual study that happened. I would never exaggerate or anything like that. So it took me about a month to get through that head first JavaScript book, but I was eager for something else after that. I wasn't sure what, I was a little bit lost, but I went back to the email that my friend had written me and I saw one of the points from there was build a project. So I tried to figure out what the best project to build was. I even talked to my friend, he recommended Tetris. That sounded good to me. And so guess what? I dove right into building a JavaScript Tetris app. I quit my job at the time, which was car sales. I took about a month off and just focused on that literally 40, 50, 60 hours a week. Every ounce of my attention and focus went into that. Now, in retrospect, there's some takeaways, right? So I eventually built the Tetris app. It took me about a month, month and a half, something like that. It was grueling. I was able to quit my job, thankfully. But in retrospect, it's not really the best way to take it. Tetris is 
extremely complex. There's a lot of different moving parts. You really have to have some good fundamental skills with this. Um, I was able to pick that up on the way, but it is better to have smaller projects that lead up to that, right? So you guys all probably know, you've heard all the, you know, some of the basic projects that you can do building a clock or something like that, or a, you know, something like a to-do app, a calculator. These are good projects to build at first and then work your way up to something as complicated as a Tetris app. Now I can't stress enough the importance of how significant it was that I jumped into a project building after only a month. There were a lot of things I learned, but the three things that I really took away is number one, uh, getting really good at understanding the core problem that you're trying to solve. So something like a Tetris app or even a calculator app or a to-do app, you need to spend some time up front figuring out what that app is supposed to do. You're supposed to sort of like elucidate all the little things it's supposed to do from keeping score in my case, how all of the tetraminos, I figured out they were called tetraminos by the way, how they all move, what actually constitutes the score, how, oh, and also there's increases in speed. I had to make sure I listed all that out so I understood the problem. And then from there, the hardest thing that I found was breaking down all of these problems into smaller tasks, which I call small chunking, right? So if you yourself right now want to go out and build a Tetris app, you will get overwhelmed with all the little tiny things you have to do. You may not know where to start. This is the thing, the most common problem I see of new programmers. And the skill you have to learn is to figure out how to small chunk or take a problem, the smallest problem you possibly can, and break it down to little tasks. Now, the other thing you'll get good at is debugging. Debugging is the process of figuring out why your code's not working. So a lot of the problems you're gonna run into, and, and whether you're a professional developer or you're brand new, is that you're gonna there's gonna be a lot of human error. So you're gonna cause a lot of the problems. That's perfectly normal. The debugging process is a process of elimination that you're gonna use. There's also tools that you can use to figure out where problems are occurring. And again, you only get good at this by actually building projects. This next period from about two, two and a half months to the 10 month period is what I call middle times, the middle period. And the reason I call it that is because a few things happened, right? So for example, I learned a second programming language at one point, which was C Sharp. I built a bunch of smaller applications in JavaScript, some medium applications in C Sharp. But overall, I have to tell you, this was probably the hardest part. It was the hardest part because learning really slows down. Like when you first start learning this and you're learning about variables and you're putting together your first project and you're learning about quality comparison, it's exciting. You're, you're getting a lot of dopamine because you're learning something new and every single day you can sort of point to like what you learned and you're excited to wake up the next day. In this middle period, once you get past some of the basics, you build a couple of projects, you start to see that it there's just no daily increases in your skill. And most of the work you're gonna be doing is monotonous. You show up, you put in a little time, you read the little part of the book you're reading or a course, you put together a little part of your project, maybe you do some programming challenges, but you just won't really feel like you're progressing. And a lot of times that feels like something is wrong, but you have to just remain focused in the process. And for me, I was lucky at the time, I just knew that if I just show up every day, I put in the work, I felt like good things were gonna happen after a few months, and in my case, 10 months. And it, it did, I ended up getting pretty far in 10 months. But the big takeaway that I have for you, and this is something I've seen with a lot of my clients I work with in my mentorship program, is those middle times are very trying. You're going to second guess yourself. You're gonna feel like, oh, because I'm not progressing as much as I'd like, you're gonna think that you need to switch things up and learn a third or a fourth programming language or some new library that everybody's talking about. Actually, what you need to do is just stay focused, right? Just stay focused on the task at hand. Whatever you're learning, if it's a project you're building that's gonna go in your portfolio for the future, just continue on that. And don't really necessarily worry about progression. Now, I would give you a quick trick here if you ever feel like you're in this middle period and you feel like you're not advancing, look back the last few weeks and honestly say, like, have I learned very much in the past two weeks or three weeks? Like, have I got better? Has there been some improvement? And typically the answer is yes. And you'll actually see that the timeline is just a little bit longer. Okay, so now I'm about 10 months in. And like I said, I had pretty much a portfolio project at this point. I had learned two programming languages. What I noticed most at this point is that progress was not only slow, it would come to basically a crawl. Like it was so slow that I'm just like, I'm not really sure how much more progress I'm gonna make here in the next few months. It's really just gonna be a real slog from this point forward. So I basically got it in my mind, it kind of intuitively made sense that it's time to start just applying for jobs. And I went out there, I created this resume here, that's your, your standard look resume, I put together like a interesting portfolio site and I just started applying. And to be honest with you, for about a month or maybe a little bit more, nothing really happened. I didn't receive any responses. I asked my friend like, what am I doing here? You know, 35 applications, should I be doing something different? And he gave me the best advice that I ever got as far as the job hunt process goes. And he said, look, 
I need to throw away all of your traditional ideas of how to get a job. He's like, you're trying to get in front of somebody who can hire you, like your resume, or even if you call somebody directly like a recruiter, and you're trying to convince them to basically get you to the next process, like get you in for an interview. So he's like, scrap your resume version. He's like, get a new fun one, a new interesting one, something that stands out, put an about me on there that's actually interesting and not just sort of like, you know, copy pasta and say you're inspired and passionate. Like you can focus on that, but make it your words. And I came up with this resume. It looks super goofy, I will give you that. It doesn't have any of my previous professional experience. I kind of threw that out of the window. But what's interesting is I put that out there and within a week, I got a recruiter to reach out to me. They said my resume looks interesting, interestingly enough, and they linked me up with a company who ended up eventually hiring me. So that was some of the best advice I got. Two big takeaways as far as the job hunt process. Uh, number one thing, you really wanna apply for jobs before you're ready. You're gonna make a million excuses as to why you need to keep waiting and learn more things. Just jump into it and you can learn from that experience. And then number two is, look, job hunting is really a numbers game, especially when it comes to the self-taught stuff. So don't be ever, ever be afraid to try something really, really different, whether that's reaching directly to a recruiter, calling them, sending them flowers. I don't care what it is. Like you gotta find some way to stand out and you can't stand out with experience. So you gotta find some other way and you gotta get creative and also just be patient throughout that process. Now, if you're trying to follow a similar path of myself and become a self-taught programmer, at this point, I wanna let you know that I have a mentorship program that I've been running since 2018 where I help aspiring self-taught programmers become a programmer. And that's what my mentorship program is all about. So if you're interested in learning more about that, I will leave a link in the description below of how you can do that. That link will be to book an assessment call with me. On that call, we will go over some of your goals, some of the issues you've been having. And if I can tell things are a good fit, I'll cover the investment for the program, how it works in detail, and we can go from there. So make sure to book a call as soon as possible. I promise you, uh, bookings go really fast, so don't pass up the opportunity if you're interested, of course. Other than that, thank you so much for watching and peace out, everybody.